Hello and welcome to the DSP project. I'm your host Rupert Brown and this week I want to do a follow-up to last week's video which was layering snares and I hadn't intended to do this video but I've got um, two questions came out um, from quite a few people. The first one was do you layer kicks the same way you layer snares and the second one was regarding phase. I briefly skimped over phase in the end of the last video um, which sort of maybe <laughs> raised more questions than it gave you guys answers. So this week I want to give a, a quick demonstration on um, phase cancellation and show you what it is what's causing it and how to get around it. Um, this is very, very basic just to, to get the concept across of what it is. If you want to, if you want me to go a bit more technical in it, then uh, come down and send me an email or leave a comment and then um, we can go a bit more deeper into that. But this is just to give you an idea of what it is. Uh, as far as is laying, layering kicks the same as layering snares, similar but not really. It's, it's a little bit different. Um, when the, the dominant frequency, the lower it goes, the more chance you have of running into um, phasing problems and things like that. So for that reason, my first suggestion would be not to layer kicks. Is if you can, try and find something that will, uh, that will do the job straight out of the box because it can be a bit finicky. Um, but you'll notice what I'm doing is um, not just using EQ to separate the sounds out, but really using the ADSR filters. Um, Particularly the, the attack parameter um, is the main thing that I'm using to, to separate each part out. So we've got three sounds, um, we've got the, the initial kind of snap, then we've got the kind of, which has no, no attack on it, then we've got the, the mid, which is kind of the punchy part of it, uh, and then the, the last part of the sound which it trails out, which is like the actual bass and the, the real subby part of the kick. But you'll see how that's done, um, so let's get started. Okay, so I've got a little example file here um, with three, three channels of audio loaded in. Um, the example I'm using is a kick. Sounds like that. It looks like this. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going we're to introduce a, uh, a second sample. This is the exact same sample. Um, it looks a little bit bigger because I've got that stretched down. There we go. This is the exact same sample and it's in phase. And when I say it's in phase, you'll see that the peaks and lulls all line up at the same point. So high point, high point, low point, low point. So what's going to happen is when we add these two signals together is we're essentially going to get a doubling effect because um, this, this peak is exactly the same as this peak. So it's kind of like uh, the peak times two, if you will. So um, the sample plays and you hear when we add the second channel in that it gets um, it gets louder. So far so easy. So that's um, that th those two signals are in phase. So I'm now going to mute that in phase channel out and drop it away and open up this this channel here. Now this signal is out of phase. I've this is the exact same sample. So if we look at it like here, it looks, looks identical, but it's, it's out of phase. So if we look carefully, we can see the, the peak here is, lines up with the lull here, and the peak here um, lines up with the lull here. So basically, we're going to get um, this exact peak plus the exact opposite of that, this lull, is going to cancel out and e equal zero. Because we're using the exact same sample, it's just it's just flipped 180, um, that it's going to cancel, cancel each other out. So if we listen to the difference between um, the kick, first kick by itself, and then I'm going to bring in the inverted kick. And that's, um, that's cancellation at work. So that, that sound is, is practically, practically gone. Now, um, there's a few things we can do to, to get around this. Um, the reason why this is so immense that the sound completely disappears is because I'm using the exact same sample. So um, if you have other kicks that are around the same frequency, you're going to get a, a kind of a phasing effect, but it won't make it completely disappear because they aren't um, complete mirror images of each other. But I'll show you what happens if we um, now offset this, this kick slightly. It, we're still going to hear a, a phasey type effect, but it will be, it will, uh, the volume will pick up quite quickly. So if I just move the start point,
So you can hear that kind of um, phasey sound. It's actually the same um, the same way that a flanger works. You can hear that kind of a uh, a flangey sound as I as I'm moving the start point, and you can see the peaks um, sort of slowly coming in and out of alignment. So even with these, um, even when I've got them sort of close to lined up, you can still hear it's kind of, it's not quite the same, it sounds a little bit kind of hollow. So that's phase uh, and, and work. So what we can do, one way to um, reverse the phase is we can use a utility plugin. If we drop that on our, um, our uh, inverted phase unit, and we use the these little buttons here are phase left and phase right. So this is going to invert the phase background, and so we should get a nice loud kick again. This will be exactly the same as our in phase kick. Okay, so a lot like our snare layering, I've got three channels here, a high, mid, and low kick, and also a kick mix. Um, the mix channel is just here in this effect rack. We have this a meter put on, so you can we can have a look at the, uh, the frequencies of each kick as we go. So I'll just quickly um, solo each one for you so you can see what I've chosen out. So this is for the, the high frequency content and for the initial snap. This next kick is for the um, the mids, which sort of comes uh, just after the initial uh, snap, the kind of uh, the decay part, which is where we're going to get our punch from. And then we've got the low kick here, which is going to be the bassy part, kind of a 909 sounding thing. All right. So uh, first of all, the the high kick. I'm going to start out um, by doing our envelope work, and I'm going to get completely get rid of the um, the release and sustain because I want to just capture that very first uh, attack um, at the beginning of the sound, and then cut everything else off after that. Okay, now I'm going to throw an EQ on here, and uh, looking at our meter, we can see there's quite a, there's a bit of a spike up near 20k, so there's um, a bit of sort of unwieldy high frequency content. Um, so I'll put I'll start by putting a low pass in, and now I'll put a high pass in. there okay fine all right i think that will do for now for the the high frequency let's move on to the mid okay so as you can probably clearly hear but we can also see here there's some um, some crazy high frequency stuff going on um, it doesn't sound very nice at all so we'll jump to our eq again and put a low pass filter there and roll off some of the bass mm. let's try that maybe a little bump okay and now on the envelope side of things I'm going to take a put, put a bit of a tack on to leave room for the for that initial snap for the high kick which is fine and as for the um, the tail OK, 
Okay, we'll we'll try that. See how that goes. And now onto the low. Okay, so I'm going to um, EQ this quite heavily. High pass, but we want to take this kind of. Don't want to go too low because we want to leave room for the the sub of for, of our bass line, but that's still fairly bassy. And a low pass. Bring it right down. Little bump. And uh, we want to use a, a bit of attack here to leave uh, enough room for our high and mid part before the, the bass really comes through. Now let's see how that fits in with our mid part. So you can kind of hear you get that, um, that punch of the mid kick and then the, the bass from the low kick just ever so slightly afterwards. And partner that with the snap. All right. So now I'll just quickly um, move the levels around a little bit. Bring bring these down. Give us a little bit of room. Uh, and I want to bring some of the the high frequency content out here. This is just a bit just a bit too snappy for my likings. And I'm getting quite, um, you'll notice something doesn't sound quite right with the tone of this, this low kick, it kind of, that, this sound is really kind of, stand, that, that kind of note is really standing out, like it doesn't sound right, so we're actually going to try and um, transpose this down maybe. think minus two there you see you can hear now how that um, hopefully you can hear how that really does sound a lot more like one kick now with that when I when I shift that down a little bit as opposed to sound that that really now sounds out of place okay so we're getting we're getting a bit closer now A little bit more bass. Cool, all right, so now I'm moving on to the, the processing. And I'm not gonna go overboard this time. Compress. Raise the inputs again using the T-Rex. Um, Fairchild emulation. Nice, and just up the output a little bit. You could go a bit further if you wanted something maybe something a bit more edgy than I might um, hmm. I might go to go for the camel fat again before the compressor maybe give it uh, a little bit of coloration try bringing this distortion up to the filter off And there you have it. So that's one approach to layering kicks. Again, there are different um, techniques depending on who you ask. And um, 
be be careful not to let things overlap too much and as I said before um, to be honest I don't even really lay a kicks that that often I will try and find one one kick that will do the job um, but having said that it's, this is a way of creating something unique and that's definitely something worth striving for in your music um, finally as I said last week uh, we've got a, a position open if you're interested in doing a bit of uh, a bit of video editing a bit of a recording you want to meet some interesting people in the industry get a bit of experience then please send me an email to inbox at the dspproject.com and if you're not already here please head down to the website the dspproject.com where you can leave uh, a comment uh, subscribe and uh, have a good old time all right that's all we've got time for this week I will see you next week Thank you.